Hello everyone, welcome to Wally Worlds. Today we're going to talk about game flow. Most of the time when people watch the game, their eyes are on the ball. They need to see if the ball is going to end up in the court or in the goal or in the basket. But most of the coaches look at the broad picture. They look at the players on the court, how they move, what they do and where they need to go instead of just one action. They also look at the opponent a lot to understand from that and what they do and how to counter their actions. Saying it short, all the time they follow the game flow and try to understand what their team needs to do. Each game has its game flow and as far as volleyball, we know that the game is split into points. Each point is a cycle on its own, but within that single point, there is a game flow setting nicely. Let's look at it right now. With two teams in the court, one starting the serve and the other receiving, we can recognize three phases within the game that change from one team to another in that single point. Let's say that team A is serving and team B is receiving. Since team A is serving, it begins with the phase K1, as we call it, which contains actions of serving, blocking, covering block and defending. Team B is receiving and they are in a phase K2 which contains actions of receiving, setting, spiking and covering the attacker. As the ball is served, each team performs their actions within their phases. Once team, team B ends their last action, with spiking and the ball goes over the net to the opponent. In this case, team A now takes action of receiving, setting, spiking, while team B is in defense mode. So now the phases are switched and they perform their actions within their own phase. These phases switch until the point ends and whoever, whoever wins the point gets the serve again and starts with the phase K1 again. If you paid attention to what I talked about in the beginning, it was that I said uh, three phases. The third one that we missed is called transition phase. It is the phase where team goes from defense into attack or from an attack into a defense. It can happen within the point that the team goes from K2 into the same phase again. To give you an example for, for that, uh, when the spiker attacks and it gets blocked by the team A it, um, and the ball bounces off the block into team B's court again, they have another phase, another set of pass, set and attack again. In these transition phases, a lot can happen. Uh, I also want to mention that what I was referring to action are actually technical elements that players train in the practice. But not all technical elements are used all the time. As the phases jump from one to another, some are more used than others, and you will always have the serve, for example, so then you must train that always. But in, in, in the single point, there can be just the serve and nothing else. You can win a point by serving. In another, you can serve, receive, then attack. In others, Team B can be in a couple of defense position in a row and still win a point. Situations are limitless, but they are direct consequence of what is happening at the moment. Coaches that understand that are doing a much better job than others. Yes, statistics help, tactical preparation help, but in a live game, if you do not control your own ability to moderate that toward the opponent, it may cause you trouble. So this is all for today. I hope that I have complicated a few things for you, uh, but that is how the learning starts. And as usual, like, follow, share the love and have a great volleyball day.